This is the video where you learn everything that you need to know about your Insta360 ONE X2 action camera. The Insta360 ONE X2 records 360 degree images. Here's one I recorded earlier and you can see as I move my phone around, I can look wherever I want and you get a strange feeling of watching something live, even though it's actually a recording. In fact, this device has a whole load more tricks up its sleeve. The ONE X2 can be used to create a wide range of shots that are either difficult or sometimes impossible to achieve with a regular camera. You might find the device a bit daunting when you're just starting out. Or maybe you've had the camera for a while, but you just haven't yet fully got to grips with it. Either way, this video is for you. So I'm going to start with getting set up and the basics of shooting video before I move on to more advanced techniques. I've also got a variety of extras commonly used with this camera, so I'll be looking at how to use those as well. The Insta360 app is pretty essential for using the camera. There's various settings controls including ISO and shutter speed, as well as editing software. So you'll want to install that if you haven't already. If you've just bought this camera, one of the first things you need to do is to remove the protective coverings from the lenses. Now be aware that these lenses can get scratched quite easily. As you can see, they have this dome covering the actual camera lens which sticks out. And if you just drop the camera down on the table, eventually this dome is going to get covered in scratches. For that reason, it's a good idea to rest the camera on a soft surface. There's a soft case which comes in the box, so why not use that? You might also want to consider getting this lens cap accessory. On one side, you have three catches which slide open. The top one opens the USB-C charging port. So you'll probably want to get the camera charged fully before you start using it the first time. The other two open up the battery compartment. Before we can start using the camera, we will need to install a memory card. And this is a Insta360 branded mini SD card. Now, if you haven't yet bought a mini SD card, it's worth considering the speed of the card. A cheaper card may be too slow and result in problems in terms of video quality. Insta360 recommends that you use UHS-I micro SD cards with a V30 or above speed class and XFAT format. So I don't advise cutting costs on the memory card. And by the way, you can install a card with storage space up to one terabyte. So to install a memory card, take the battery out and slip it into the mini SD slot. There's actually a little graphic of a mini SD card inside, which shows you which way around it goes. Some people recommend that you format your SD card when you first install it. Swipe down on the screen, swipe left, tap the cog, scroll down the menu to SD card and tap. Now tap format. To power on the camera, short press the button on the side once. After a few seconds, the mini touchscreen shows the camera's view. Except it doesn't show the whole view because, in fact, the Insta360 ONE X2 is looking at everything all at once. To power off, long press the side button. The Insta360 ONE X2 isn't really a camera, it's actually two cameras. Insta360 calls these cameras the inner and outer cameras. The inner camera is on the same side as the mini touchscreen, while the outer camera is on the opposite side. Each camera has a 180 degree field of view, which when combined by being stitched together, gives us the whole 360 degree view. Now, while we can use this device, holding it in our hands, like we would an ordinary camera, to utilize the full power of the 360 degree video, we usually place it on a rod like this. These are two that are made by Insta360, the power selfie stick and the extended edition selfie stick. When the images from the two cameras are stitched together, this selfie stick becomes invisible. We can capture photos and videos using the device as a standalone camera or we can use a smartphone with the Insta360 app as a remote. Using the app, we get a bigger preview. We can edit videos and as well, we can access settings, tutorials and more. What we see in the mini screen here is just a small part of that view and we can swipe on the screen to move that view left or right or up and down. But if we're recording the whole 360 degrees, changing this view isn't going to make any difference to the final video. 
Remember, the 1x2 will capture everything around it and then, later on, we can choose the view that we want to show. Not only that, but we're also able to change this view during the shot with keyframes. And that is one of the great features of this device. Using keyframes, we're able to give the impression that we have our own personal camera operator following us around, capturing dynamic movements. And of course, the 1X2 also specializes in that well-known mini world effect. So I'm gonna be covering all this and more in this video so you can get the most out of the camera. But first, the basics. To record a video, just press the shutter button on the front. The record timer starts counting. To stop recording, just press the record button again. The 1X2 can also be used when it's powered off. Press the record button, the 1X2 powers on and either takes a photo or records video, depending on the mode it was set to when you last powered off. Then, after taking a photo or after you stop recording, the 1X2 powers off again by itself. The video or photo we just captured is now saved on that mini SD card we installed earlier. To play this video or view photos, just swipe right from the left of the screen to open up the gallery. Tap the button in the middle of the screen to play the video. And if we want to see a different view, we can swipe around on the screen while it's playing. Now, if we want to use this video, we need to transfer it from the One X2 to some other device, a smartphone, a tablet like an iPad, for example. We can use a laptop or a desktop computer. Then we need to use either the Insta360 app, the Insta360 Studio software for desktop, or simply connect the device directly to your computer with a cable. Open the app and connect to the One X2 via Bluetooth. Make sure both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are enabled. If this is the first time connecting the app, it's going to ask you to activate the camera first. Once connected, tap the album button. The app will now access the video files from the camera or from the phone if you've downloaded them. If you play a video, you're actually streaming it via Bluetooth from the X2's memory. You can see where the video files are by using this drop down menu in the top left corner. All shows you videos on your phone and on the camera. Select local to see videos stored on your phone or camera for videos there. Using the app, you can move files from the One X2 to your phone, as well as for editing clips. When editing clips, you can either edit them while they're still on the camera or on your phone. But it's probably best to move them to your phone for a better editing experience. The Insta360 Studio software is free to download for Mac or PC. To access your videos, connect the camera to your computer using the USB-C port. Open the program and it should automatically detect a connected Insta360 One X2. And you can choose to select certain files or simply import everything on the device. Now see how you can easily reframe and zoom in out of these 360 degree videos. And you can program these movements very easily by adding keyframes. Again, you can edit files on your computer or while they're still on the One X2. One major difference between editing on this and the Insta360 app is that the studio software can export video in higher quality. You can even export in ProRes. If you've watched One X2 videos on YouTube, you might have seen poor quality images with fuzzy pixelated shadows and maybe even have this experience yourself with your own videos. But using the studio software, you should be able to make your videos look quite a bit better quality. If you're new to 360 video, then you need to start thinking differently about how video is captured. Normally, when we're shooting video, we think a lot about where we're going to aim our camera. But when we're shooting 360 degree video, we can pretty much forget about the framing completely. In fact, the only framing that we need to think about is changing our frame of mind because 360 degree video has no frame. Instead, we just need to think about where the camera is located. In some ways, you can think about the One X2 like a drone. Or think of it as if it's another you. Imagine if you could clone yourself and then get your other self to hold the camera. And most of the time, we're going to mount the One X2 to a selfie stick. Then we're going to extend the stick and use it to position this other you. Let's say I want my other me to stand over there and start filming. Later, once I download this video onto my phone or desktop, 
I'm now the camera operator, standing where I placed the camera earlier. And it's only now that I start to think about framing. All that said, the closer a subject is to the camera, the more obvious this stitch line becomes. So for example, if you wanna avoid the stitch line appearing across someone's face, make sure one of the cameras is pointing at them. When you power on the One X2, you will see various icons and information dotted around. After a few seconds, it disappears, leaving you with a clear screen. To get that information back, just tap the screen. The information you see here depends on the mode the camera is in. Right now, it's in video mode. Swiping from each side of the screen opens various settings menus, as well as the gallery. Swipe down on the screen, swipe left, tap the cog, scroll down to the menu to video encoding and tap. Select 360 mode and select H.265, then do the same for Steadicam mode. The H.265 codec is more advanced and will create smaller files than the H.264 codec. Back at the main screen, at the bottom, 5.7K is the resolution and frames per second is 30. You can't actually go any higher than that and it's really recommended to keep it at 5.7K for shooting regular video. However, if we switch to 4K, this now opens up a 50 frames per second option. And if we switch to 3K, we now get a 100 frames per second option. So shooting at higher frame rates allows us to slow the video down later to create a slow motion effect. Tap the camera icon and then swipe up and down to switch between photo and video capture. Both video and photo modes have a sub-menu with various different options. Things like burst mode and time-lapse, bullet time and so on. But I'll go into those settings later. On the main screen, tapping where it says 360 will switch between using both cameras and using one camera. Insta360 calls these the lens modes. If it says 150, then it's only capturing images from one camera. And this is called Steadicam mode. If it says 360, then it shoots using both cameras. And this is called 360 mode. Tap the circular arrow button to switch between the inner and outer cameras. Remember, if you're in 360 mode, it will always record from both cameras, regardless of which camera you select to view. Like with video, a photo taken in 360 mode allows you to see the whole view later, except this time it's just one still frame. So you could then grab several different regular frames from that 360 degree image. Here's another tip for filming in 360 mode. So when we're thinking about positioning the camera, of course we can just stick it in one place and start filming. For example, we could mount it onto a tripod and it will film everything around it. Or we can mount it to a selfie stick and hold it above ourselves as we walk along. And you've probably seen this position used for filming those tiny world videos. But you can actually create more impressive shots if you move the One X2 during the shot. Using a drone, we can fly a camera all over the place. And it's actually a good idea to think of the One X2 like a drone. Except instead of propellers lifting it into the air, it has this pole. So as I'm walking along, I can fly the One X2 around. I can fly around myself, down to the ground, up into the air, over objects and so on. And remember, of course, that this selfie stick is going to be removed from the final video. That said, you can still see the shadow of the stick sometimes. Now, when we come to edit the video, we can add further framing movement on top of this positional movement. As well, there's also powerful object tracking features, but that's gonna be coming up later in this video. Steadicam mode turns the One X2 into a more traditional action camera with a very wide angle lens. When you switch to this mode, you'll notice that you now have a maximum resolution of 1440p. You now get these black bars and a button here allows you to switch between horizontal or vertical framing. As well, when you open resolution and frame rate settings, you now have slightly different options. You can now choose 50 frames per second as well as 30 frames per second. At the top, you can now switch between basic and pro. I recommend using pro mode for more editing options later, such as reframing and adding barrel rolls and stuff like that. 
As well, Pro Mode enables flow state stabilization and horizon lock. Whichever mode the One X2 is set to, tap the camera icon to open up and then swipe to select other options. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Now when I tried using HDR mode for 360 video, the camera started glitching, but stopped when I switched to Steadicam mode. In fact, Insta360 recommends not to use HDR for video. As well, when set to HDR, you are limited to 25 or 24 frames per second. The HDR process involves taking three images simultaneously, different exposures, and then combining them. So if you do shoot 360 video in HDR mode, it's recommended to have the One X2 on a tripod in a fixed position, because if the camera isn't moving, it's better able to cope with the HDR processing. Time-lapse shoots frames with longer intervals, creating a speeded up video. To set the interval time between frames, swipe left and now scroll down to the bottom setting. Here you can set the time between frames from 0.5 seconds to 120 seconds. Time shift creates a video where you can switch or shift, should we say, between time lapse and regular speed video. And this allows you to slow the video at key moments, which you can choose when you're editing the video. So bullet time basically shoots at 3K and 100 frames per second, which is then slowed down to create a slow motion effect. And there's also an accessory you can purchase from Insta360 called the bullet time cord. Attach the One X2 to a cord and swing it around while recording 100 frames per second video. Something to play around with and get creative. In standard video mode, if we swipe left, we can access various settings. At the top, we have a box with a plus and a minus sign, which is for exposure controls. By default, this is set to auto, but if we switch to manual, we get the shutter speed and ISO controls below. If you set these manually, exposure won't change during the shot. This can look more professional, but it does make it harder to shoot video, because when you move the camera around, you might find some areas are too dark or too bright. So I wanted to capture a shot with the leaves of the tree in the foreground, but using auto exposure, the lake in the background was overexposed. Using manual exposure, I was able to correctly expose the background and the shot looks much better to me. To set manual exposure, set ISO as low as possible before setting shutter speed. Now, if shutter speed is as slow as it can go and the video is still underexposed, then increase the ISO. But obviously, the more you increase the ISO, the noisier the video is gonna get. Below that is a button called EV, which stands for exposure value. This leaves the exposure in auto, but allows you to adjust up and down. So if you think the auto exposure is coming out too bright, you can set a negative value here. Next, we can set white balance manually. For reference, 5000K is the equivalent of clear daylight. Again, if you set this manually, it won't change during the shot, and that makes your video look a bit more professional. On the downside, you're going to need to make sure this is set correctly for every shot, which does take up a bit more time. Finally, we have the color profile setting. There's standard, there's log for more options when color grading, and there's vivid, which gives the image a bit more vibrancy in terms of saturation and contrast. But you might find that this is a bit too much. It's up to you and your personal taste. It's probably good for cloudy days when the colors and the contrast are muted. So most of the time I use the standard setting and this gives me some room to play around with colors when editing. You can connect the One X2 to your smartphone and use the Insta360 app as a remote. To connect your smartphone to the app, you need to enable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and location services. Tap the camera icon in the middle and now you can monitor the video coming from the camera. Swipe around to see a different view, change settings and you can also change modes. One mode that's only possible using the app is the fly through effect. This paper plane arrow button here allows you to shoot 
two shots and then it will stitch them together. And this enables you to create a shot that looks like a drone flying through an object like a window or maybe under a chair. Tap the paper plane, tap record, and now move the camera through the object. Tap the paper plane icon again to pause the recording. And this will be the stitching point. Now move to the other side, place the camera in roughly the same position where you paused, tap the paper plane to unpause it and continue moving. Open the clip in the gallery and it will stitch the two shots together and play them to you. And then you need to export the final video as normal. When editing 360 degree video, there are two phases of editing. The phase one is where we edit a single clip of video, reframing, zooming in and out, adding keyframes and so on. We then export that video from the Insta360 app or from Insta360 Studio. And phase two is where we take the clip we just edited and add it to a number of other clips to create a sequence. In this video, I'm gonna mostly talk about phase one because phase two is really just like regular editing. And once you've been through phase one on a clip, you'll have a video clip that you can play and edit just like any other video. So if we connect our 1x2 to a computer and open the folder containing all the media files that we've captured, we can see that 360 videos do not appear as regular files. And these files can only be read by the app or the studio software. Let's look at how to reframe and edit videos using the Insta360 app. There's two ways to download media from the camera to our phone. The first way is to tap the select button in the top right corner, then select all the media that you want to download. And now tap the download arrow at the bottom. The second way is to open a video, swipe the menu at the bottom until you find the download button. Tap that to download. If we tap to open a 360 video file, we can now edit this file, adding various adjustments, filters and effects, as well as one of the main tasks of editing 360 video, which is reframing. To play a clip, tap the screen. And now at the top, we can switch between snap and edit. If we switch to snap, when we move our phone around, it changes the view of the camera. Tap the button bottom left to change the aspect ratio of the frame. Choices are standard 16 by nine, one by one, that widescreen cinematic 2.35 to one, and finally the vertical format, nine by 16. Swipe along the timeline at the bottom to move the playhead to where you want your clip to start. Tap the record button and the video will play. Any movements of the phone are gonna be recorded or you can swipe the screen to change the view that way instead. As well, you can use the slider to zoom in and out. And as you can see, it's as if we're back there filming with our smartphone, deciding which angle to capture. When you stop recording, a new clip is gonna be created below the main video image. And you can keep recording to capture various clips and they're gonna be added below. So tap export and then tap export to phone album. Each clip is gonna be saved as an individual clip in your album. If you tap create a new story, the clips will be added to the app's inbuilt video editor. And then when you return to the snap window, those clips are gonna be gone. If I switch back to edit, we can now go through the important features and functionality here. So at the bottom, we have the video timeline and the playhead marked by a white line and a yellow circle with a plus sign. The yellow circle is the button for adding keyframes. Swipe to position the playhead. Tap the plus button to add a keyframe. To delete a keyframe, just tap the same button. And once you've added a keyframe, keyframe options are gonna appear above the timeline. We can select field of view settings from narrow to the widest setting, which is tiny planet. We can also create a custom field using two fingers. If we move along the timeline, add another keyframe, and then change the field of view. When we play between the keyframes, the field of view is gonna change from the first setting to the second. So this allows us to, for example, zoom in and out during a shot. If we select viewfinder, we now get a zoom slider with a record button. And this slider goes from close up to tiny planet. Moving the phone around again changes the view. If we press record, the video starts playing and we can record zoom and view changes 
moving the slider and the phone around at the same time. And to stop recording, just remove your finger. And the movement that we just recorded will be represented as a red area on the timeline. Now we can select this area and if we don't like what we did, we can just delete it by tapping that trash can. Now Deep Track allows you to track an object or person. Uh, tap Deep Track and now draw your finger over the object. In this case, I'm just going to track myself. Tap this button and it's going to start tracking. A yellow area on the timeline marks the tracking data. Tap to stop tracking and you can tap the yellow area and then tap the trash can again to delete that tracking data if you didn't like what you did. And then you can redo it. And you can also change the field of view here. Now, if you've made an adjustment, you might need to just tap here to update keyframe to make sure that you've saved that change. Now, tap rotate to bring up a roll controller. Swipe left and right to set the roll angle of the camera. So we can actually use this feature to program a barrel roll into the video. You can simply place a keyframe at the point where you want the barrel roll to end and change the rotation. Now, play from the beginning and you can see the barrel roll or you can place a keyframe where you want the barrel roll to start and then another one where you want it to end. Those are just two options, but of course you can get as complex as you like here, adding a number of keyframes with all kinds of different settings. The final setting here is snapshot, which simply saves the current frame as a still image. So I think most of us know what trim does, just slide the ends to trim off unwanted footage. Color plus simply makes the video look a little bit more dynamic more colorful, more contrasty, and this can be useful if you filmed during a cloudy day and everything looks a bit flat. But if you had a bright sunny day, adding color plus might just be too much. Now multi-view allows you to set a picture within a picture using different views. Tap the plus sign to set a start point, swipe the timeline, set an end point by tapping the tick, and now choose one of the three options. You're still able to set the view of one of the images. The third option uses the two cameras, one above and one below. And this is recommended for shooting the front and back view from a car, for example. But I mean, you could use it for all kinds of things. Freeze frame allows you to add a super slow motion effect at the same time as a camera movement between two points. And this is good for dramatic moments in a video, particularly any kind of sport action, or maybe something like jumping into a pool. Again, you can just get creative here. Now tap speed and tap a speed listed. You can go from one quarter speed up to 64 times the normal speed. So that's from slow motion up to a very fast time-lapse type shot. Swipe the timeline to select an area of the video where you want the speed to occur. And if you toggle on motion blur, it's gonna give the video a really distinctive look where anything that's going past looks like it's speeding past and with this kind of blurry streak. If you tap the three dots in the top corner, you'll find various options. It's best to keep flow state stabilization on, otherwise your footage probably won't look too smooth. For reframing, make sure direction lock is off. With direction lock on, the camera is only going to face in one direction for the whole clip instead of following your movements. With identify tracking targets enabled, the app will search the video for objects to track but you might find it easier just to do this manually, which is pretty easy. So I usually have this switched off. Chromatic calibration, just make sure the colors match from both cameras. Aquavision 2.0 is for underwater footage. So if you've got some underwater footage, you can switch this on and it will remove some of that blue hue that you get when you're underwater. Under the accessories tab are buttons to enable settings for use with various accessories. So the easiest way to reframe footage is to use auto frame. When you tap this button, the app AI analyzes the clip to find what it believes are the best bits and then frames them in a certain way. And if you look closely, you'll see different icons in the top left corner of each clip. And these represent different types of shot. For example, an arrow here means that the camera is going to be looking forwards. Figure icon, that looks like it's running, and that means that the camera is going to try to track a person. And it won't necessarily be you. The AI might just decide to track some random person that's walking past. Now you can select one or more of these clips and then tap save. Those clips will now be placed together on the timeline at the bottom with a white line indicating a cut between two clips. I found that when using the app, if you want to zoom out as far as possible, 
it can take a bit of playing around with and sometimes it's actually hard to get it to zoom out fully. Now, when you zoom out using your fingers or the slider, it tells you the custom setting number here. The maximum that this can go to should be 150. So if you find this setting is below 150, but you can't make it go any higher, then try this little trick. Because when I'm just pinching, all I can go to is 130. So switch to snap, pull the slider down and switch back. Add a keyframe and now the custom setting is 150. And actually, when you use the studio editing software, you can zoom out even further. I found that it could go up to 179. So let's talk about the Insta360 Studio. If you connect your One X2 to your computer and open the studio software, you should get a message asking if you want to import files from the device. Clicking import all might be the simplest and quickest way to get started. Otherwise, you can choose to drag and drop files manually. On the left side, we now have any imported files. Double click one to open it in the main window and get editing. And you can actually also use the wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. To add a keyframe, move the white playhead line to the point on the timeline where you want to place the keyframe. Then click the add keyframe button. Now the controls that we get here are actually a bit different to those that we get in the app. We can manually set the pan, tilt and roll angles. We can manually set the field of view, which goes all the way, as I said, to 179. And we can also manually set the distortion control. As well, we have these four preset buttons here at the top. There's default, and then we have crystal ball, which is kind of self-explanatory. Then there's good old tiny planet. And finally, natural, which basically looks like a regular video without that fisheye distortion. Notice that when we click natural, the distortion value is set to zero. Now, if you play around with these settings, you can create some really fun effects. Another thing that's different about this software when you compare it to the app is that you can move the keyframes along the timeline. And this is really great for perfecting the use of keyframes to create the look exactly as you want it. And as well, if you have two keyframes, you will notice this yellow line between them. Now click this line and it's gonna bring up these adjustments which change how Studio takes you from one keyframe to the next. For example, the change can be fast and then ease slowly in to the final frame. Anyway, you can play around with all these different settings and see which one works for you or for any particular shot. And using these can make the movement look just a little bit more professional and less robotic. So to edit a keyframe, just click on it. And then to delete it, you can click on it and then click the X. Now to track an object in the studio software, click deep track, draw a box around the object you want to track. If you want to keep the object in the center of the frame, make sure to check this box. And now start the track. Keep tracking until you're finished. Now you'll have this yellow section on the timeline. So click on it to change the field of view and distortion settings, or click the trash can to delete the track if you wanna do it again or you just don't like it. Now one thing to note is that you can't place a keyframe in an area where you have this tracking information. So click time shift to add speed changes. Place the head where you want to start the change. Click the time shift button. Now move your mouse to the end of the section you want to affect and click. Use the slider to set the speed from quarter to 64 times, same as in the app. The red section now represents the area affected by the speed change. So you can click and you can drag the ends of this red section again. This makes perfecting your shot much easier than with the app. And as well, the timeline zoom controls here allow you to expand or contract the timeline. So this is another useful tool for fine tuning your edits because if you zoom in, you're gonna be able to make more precise adjustments. So that's pretty much all you need to know about Insta360 Studio. The settings controls at the side are mostly the same stuff as in the app, which I've already covered. But if we click the I button down here, we can see that this video has a bit rate of 100 megabits per second. So this actually gives us a clue for when we're setting our export settings. So we want to export a video, click the big yellow button with an arrow, and this opens up the export settings. We can choose to export reframed video or 360 video. Obviously choose 360 video if your video is intended to be viewed as a 360 video. You know, for example, YouTube supports 360 video, and this allows a viewer with a smartphone to move their phone around 
to see what they want to see as the video is playing. But apart from that, just choose reframed video. And now the important settings for the quality of your video are below. Bitrate here is at 75 megabits per second by default and we can slide it all the way to 200 megabits per second. But as the original file is only 100 megabits per second, is there really any point in going higher than that? Probably not. 100 megabits per second should be plenty. Below that, we can set our own resolution. Now, there's no easy menu to choose 1080p or 4K. For some reason, we need to input the pixel numbers ourselves. So if you want like regular 16 by 9 4K, that's going to be 3840 by 2160. But you only need to put the first number in and it will put the second number in for you. So for encoding format, we can choose the old H.264 or the new H.265, which is more efficient and creates smaller files, or ProRes, which is a professional editing codec by Apple. ProRes is going to give you the best quality files and they're also going to be easier to edit with, but they are going to be considerably bigger in size. So if you want to save having to input this stuff each time, you can save the settings as a preset. So let's call this one 4K. Now, if your video is a bit noisy, check the remove grain box. And now you can either export or add to queue. Use the queue setting if you have multiple clips that you're working on and you want to export them all together. So that pretty much covers how to use this camera and how to get the best quality video from it. But let's quickly look at some extra features that you get with the Insta360 app. With your smartphone connected to the camera via the Insta360 app, tap the Stories button at the bottom. Now there's basically three features you can use here. Create a story, shot lab and flash cut. Tap create a story, choose some clips and tap create a story again at the bottom. Those clips are now placed onto a timeline for editing. I'm not going to say too much about this feature because it's basically just a video editor that works like many others. However, you can actually include 360 degree clips that you have yet to reframe. You know, as I said, that's like the phase one part of editing 360 video. So you can actually do that within this editor. And that means, unlike in the Insta360 Studio software, that you can reframe as well as edit clips together and then add titles and music and transitions and other stuff. So to reframe a 360 video, you can move your smartphone around and zoom in and out. ShotLab contains a series of templates for creating certain effects. The app's AI is going to do most of the work for you. Again, I'm not going to go through each one, but you can just tap one that looks interesting, then tap you use this theme. Each one has a little video tutorial showing you what to do. Flash Cut is an AI powered editing feature. So you just select a bunch of clips and then let the app create and edit for you. Obviously the results are kind of hit and miss. So there's various different templates and styles to choose from and each one provides you with a track of music. Now, because it is so hit and miss, my advice is not to just select a bunch of long clips. It's better to go through and find your favorite parts from your long clips, then create new files and then import these clips into Flash Cut. The app is then going to apply transitions and music, so it still saves you time. But you're more likely to get a good video if you've only given it the best bits to choose from. Something to bear in mind when it comes to recording audio with the One X2. It has four microphones, one on each side of the camera. So this should give you a whole 360 degrees of audio. Of course, the end result is stereo audio, but it's worth noting that it's recording audio from all sides. Now, if you're going underwater with your One X2, just make sure that you have the USB-C port and the battery enclosure properly closed. If you see orange like this, that means it's not properly closed and water can get inside your camera and ruin it. If you actually take the battery out, you can see that there is a rubber seal around the battery door and that is to keep the water out. So now let's talk about the two selfie sticks that I have from Insta360. Uh, this is the extended edition selfie stick, which goes stretches out up to three meters. So you can do those drone style shots, or if you just want to get the camera as further away from you as possible, you can really do some crazy shots sweeping around up into the air. Very light, strong, it extends very easily. One downside to this is that the end is pretty thick. 
Yeah. So that means that the nearer the camera is to this handle, the more likely it is to appear. This is the power selfie stick from Insta360, and you can see that the handle is thinner. It doesn't extend as far, but that means that this handle will more likely to become invisible when it stitches the video together. So this is the power selfie stick, and you can see that it has a record button and a power so you can power on and off the camera using this button and you can also start and stop recording or take photos depending on which mode it's in we need to attach the camera to the end and just make sure that it's flush here so it's you want it to be flat so that it doesn't appear in the shot later and it comes with this little USB-C to USB-C cable so that goes in here and it goes in here and now you need to take this off because this will appear in the shot you see it sticks out and anything that sticks out from this edge is going to appear so it comes out quite easily it's designed to, to come out you just pull it you can see it's got a little sort of knobble at the end and that's what keeps it in so you can just push it in and out so to speak <laughs> so you can just push it back in afterwards when you finish no problem but of course now it's not waterproof so do not put it under water so now we can just power on the camera just press the power button and you can hear that going on and we can press record to start recording this requires charging you have to charge up the power stick and it can then charge the camera while it's attached. So it might be useful for doing long time-lapse videos where the battery in the camera might not last long enough for the duration of the time-lapse that you want to do. If you want to learn more about videography or if you want to simply support this channel so I can keep making these videos, then you can join us on Patreon. And also you can chat to me about any specific projects that you're working on or any specific pieces of equipment that you want to know about. Also, I have all kinds of downloads there. There's various books on the film look on smartphone filmmaking i've also included a cheat sheet for you to download so that's it for this video hope to see you in the next one